All right, Mark, have fun. Thank you. Hey, so good afternoon. My name is Mark Grazinia. I'm an engineer out of Charleston, South Carolina. Also have Sam Wade, one of the business development managers for this group. Here to talk to you about one of the solution sets Cisco has around satisfaction of patients, kind of the customer experience. Um, we're in DevNet, so I wanted to ask a question, understand my audience. There's a, are there a lot of developers in the room? There's also a healthcare focus coming to do, and I wasn't sure if there was a lot of healthcare focus fo personnel or developers. So if you're a developer, raise your hand. One developer, okay. Anyone healthcare focused? No, okay. Well, we'll talk about the solution set that we have. What's very interesting is it's a, it's a horizontal platform. And again, really that's the focus of today in the developer set is that we're giving you these platforms that you can integrate however you choose to. The end goal being understanding your customer or your end user and the experiences they need and relating that back to something in your business, right? So we'll talk about different pieces of business software where we act as kind of an intermediate gateway and provide that information in a two-way communication stream out to your end user. So just as a quick agenda, we're going to go over the, the, the platform itself provided by the services platform group. We're going to get a deep dive on the healthcare vertical focused implementation of this, which is called Cisco Patient Connect. And then if I have some time, I'm going to very briefly review another vertical focus session, which is the remote expert platform. So to follow up on John's keynote yesterday, um, everything Cisco is looking at right now is in, in regards to the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things, as we all know, is basically the ability to have every device out there connected. And what do we want to do with that information as we have it and how we can relate that back to our end user and their experience is, is what's very critical to the digitation of the Internet of Things movement. So for the healthcare example that I'll be referencing, if you think about in a hospital, we have things like IV pumps or maybe oxygen sensors that uh, measure the pulse of a patient. Those are all becoming connected devices. We want to understand how we can leverage those and get that information to where a relevant information set can be pushed out to the user. So in the developer section of this, again, we're in DevNet, we want to talk about these platforms. The two on the left I want to talk about very briefly, connected analytics and the connected process. Connected analytics is something that Cisco believes in very strongly, that this Internet of Things, we provide these massive data sets. And once we have that data set, we can run analytics on those and make informed decisions that are relevant to our end users and our customers. So a quick example of one of the things that Cisco is doing in the connected analytics data set is the, uh, the recent acquisition, a few years ago back now, that we had of composite software. If you're not familiar with what that is, composite software is ultimately data virtualization. So if we think about all the different data sets we have, and perhaps they reside out in remote locations, maybe it's a manufacturing facility, the question is, how do we access that data? In the old world, we had to take that data, bring those data into an ETL process, and actually bring those into a centralized data warehouse and then run the analytics. What's important to know is that that was very costly. We ended up storing the data twice, it wasn't very agile because it took a long time to perform that process and respond to it. So it wasn't effective for the business. And what composite software does is allows us to do an edge-based query where we leave that data sitting out where it sits, um, have a centralized query mechanism, and can still run the analytics. Another example of one of the developer kits that we're doing um, regards connected processes. So connected processes specifically is a services exchange platform. Um, the easiest way to describe that is just a simple use case. If you guys are familiar with one of the major car manufacturers that has a, a blue button kind of up in the sunglass department that you can push and get concierge information or maybe in the event of an accident will automatically call help for you. That service is actually provided via the Cisco Services Exchange platform. So what it does is it takes that end device and has a secure connection up to a data center in a cloud and allows that process to be done. All right, so we won't go deep into those two. The connected experiences is where I really want to spend my time. Connected experiences is actually built off of the interactive services platform. iServices has been around at Cisco for approximately seven or eight years now. The first implementation of that was actually connected stadiums. But what iServices does, again, it has this central you know, middle gateway that acts as a way that we can take business relevant information for whatever vertical we're in and those business softwares we already have 
and take information and pull that out and make it applicable to our end user. So a few examples of, of this eye services or kind of customer experience offers. We can, because this is a, you know, a horizontal platform that we've opened up with a developer kit, we can reuse this over and over again for whatever your use case is, for what your need is. Right? I'm going to talk specifically about healthcare and the financial vertical, but there are other examples that we see as we scroll down on the left. We have retail, we have transportation. So the example that I always use in retail is the ability to walk into a store and go up to a kiosk, almost a digital sign of sorts, and, and select through the online catalog. Right? So my wife may go into a store and want to try on a shirt. And rather than having to go into the dressing room and try that shirt on, she can walk into the kiosk, scroll through what's on there and say, hey, I want to try on this yellow shirt. The video comes up and takes an image of her and displays the yellow shirt on her. But maybe she says, hey, I want a blue shirt, actually. She can scroll through that online catalog and in real time see that shirt, what it would look like on her. So what's happening there is we actually have an endpoint device behind that kiosk that's talking to our you know, application platform in the middle that's going back and referencing the retail verticals applications of their online warehouse, their online catalog. So there's other pieces where we can do this around transportation, whether it be check-ins or schedules. There's pieces in the higher education where we can do connected dorm rooms, um, kiosk around the campus. The, the point I want to stress here is this developer kit, this platform that we have, you find your business need and understand your business software we can make the hooks and calls and, and APIs into those, and then you present that to your end user in whatever way is relevant. So the interactive services kind of solution set that I'm talking about, this is really quickly what it's built of. Um, you actually may have seen this on the digital sign as you walked in. We have an interactive experience client, which is actually just behind this sign, which is a little piece of hardware that's running this that connects back to a centralized interactive experience manager server. All right, so that server is actually doing the management of all these nodes that are housing the kiosk or whatever they may be. And it also has the ability via the APIs and the hooks and calls to tie in to your business software. The reference example I'll give for healthcare is going out to your EMR, such as Cerner or Epic. Okay? Now you'll notice that on the slide there's also a lot of Cisco collaboration. Uh, in a true Cisco fashion, we do things in solutions. And we strongly believe that as you're building out these kiosks, there's relevance by having an integrated collaboration story in there. So we, uh, we automatically have the ability to talk to our communications manager, show and share for doing video repositories, all of our Scientific Atlanta kind of coders and streamers that we can do multicast IPTV, et cetera. So you really see the solution set start to build out. I do want to mention, oh, apologize, we're on our third generation of IECs. Um, so my slide here is uh, formatted just slightly wrong, but the newest generation being down there in red is the IC4650. This new endpoint physically has a, a newer set of hardware components and can support three full 4K HD streams now. So as you think about your application and the content I'm pushing out to the screen, we can now have higher processing to do those full three 4K HD streams. From a visual perspective, I just want to give a couple of few quick examples. Um, in the transportation space here, we've got kind of a, a status update of where the trains are. Inside of a retail uh, branch for, for financials here, we have some offers and promotions. This online catalog is what I referenced where my wife could try on the different color shirts. And then lastly, wayfinding and directory. That example could be used really in any vertical where you have a large you know, facility that needs to be navigated. Perhaps it's an airport. So this is kind of a visual representation of what that would look like out of the monitor and the kiosk or wherever you decide to place it that's relevant to your end users. Anyone attend Cisco Live 2013 last year? Do a check-in at a kiosk by any chance or get directions, print out your stuff? So you may have used this exact platform that we're discussing today. You'll also find these around this year as well. So let me dig directly into the healthcare portion of this. Um, I'll give you a brief marketing slide on healthcare, and then I promise I'll get right into the meat. But we've done some studies, or third-party groups have done studies, and what they found about healthcare is that the experience is rated more critical in healthcare than it is in other industries. So if we compare that to hotels or airlines, health insurance, et cetera, everyone rated it higher that they wanted a good customer experience in their healthcare organization than those. 
Unfortunately, when we surveyed them again and said, where does it rank today? Healthcare actually ranked last. So we want to make sure that we're providing a better experience. Another unique statistic is that the way CMS payments are being made, CMS being Medicaid and Medicare, the government process payments, 30% of those payouts today are based upon patient satisfaction. All right, so if the patient isn't satisfied, the government doesn't pay. And private insurances are going the same way. So if hospitals and, and medical facilities want to be profitable, they need to ensure that the customer has a, a positive experience. So when we, we think about what this Patient Connect offering is, there's five main things that we want to target. We want to inform the patient, all right, and as engineers in the room, everybody engineer? Yeah, we got one engineer at least, two. We like to stay informed. We like to know what's going on. Education being the second piece, which I think ties directly into that. You want to understand maybe in the hospital what you're in there for, how I can fix it, what I can do to understand it better. Entertainment, we're talking about kind of a patient experience. If you've had the opportunity to, opportunity to stay in a, in a hospital, you realize that sometimes it's not comfortable. We want to do everything you can to make it comfortable. Engagement is going to talk about our two-way communication set to make sure that we're engaging the patient with relevant information that may come out of the EMR, for example. And then lastly, connecting is our piece of collaboration. So there's a ton of use cases around collaboration where we can make the, the stay for a hospital inpatient better by connecting them to the appropriate resource. It's important to note in healthcare that this experience starts from the moment you walk in and doesn't end until you go home. So if we look at here, we've got the lobby kiosk. Those could be used for things like patient check-in, so I don't have to deal with a clipboard. Um, they could also be wayfinding, for example. We then move over to waiting rooms. Every one of you sat in a waiting room at some point or an exam room. Maybe you said, hey, I want to know what I'm in here for so we can push content to you then. The patient room for a long-term stay, I'm going to drive into that very deep, but there's lots that we can do there. And then lastly, when a user goes home, we want to stay connected to them there as well. Another thing that's coming around in healthcare is hospitals are not paid for recurring visits. Right? We want to solve the problem. We don't want to have you back. So if I can send you home with relevant information via a mobile application, I have a better success rate of fixing your problem and not having you come back where I'm not paid for it. So the point here is that this platform, this interactive services platform that I'm discussing, has the ability to have hooks and tie-ins to all these different types of engagements. It's all about understanding where the user is, what time they're there, and what kind of device they are, and giving the content that's relevant to that. So I always set up this Patient Connect opportunity with a very uh, simple story. This, this really hit home to me, and I was able to latch on to it, because if you look at the middle picture, about two years ago I was on vacation in Oregon, and my wife and my brother were in a, a pretty tragic motorcycle accident. And I had the opportunity to spend nine days in ICU with them, which uh, doesn't sound like much of an opportunity, but in the end it worked out. The great news is that they're back on track, and everything's going to be fine with them health-wise. The bad news is that nine days in ICU was absolutely miserable for everyone, probably more so for my wife and brother who were in pain than I, but it was just not a good experience the way I interacted with everyone. So, you know, what we want to see everything move to is the picture on the left, which is the future patient room that we're discussing, the Patient Connect opportunity. But what I ended up using is in the picture on the right, you see a whiteboard. Now, as an engineer, I'm very comfortable with a whiteboard. I do whiteboard designs constantly. But what I can tell you is that a whiteboard is great for one-way interaction, and it's not very good for two-way interaction. So this is where the Patient Connect solution comes in. I'll reference different things as we go through the different slides of, of, of the way this thing interacts, that if I would have been in the hospital and had access to this type of system, how they would have improved my stay, how they would have improved my experience, and, uh, and allowed me to give a better recommendation for the hospital stay. So, the first thing we see here is the general kind of patient room experience. This is the generic screen. Again, this would be displayed when you walk in a hospital room on the TV that's already in there. It's best done on a 40 inch or larger TV. But this is the generic screen. Um, what you can tell here is there's no customer, or I'm sorry, uh, patient specific information. The reason for that is because we don't have anyone checked into the, to the room yet. And you may ask me, I said, hey, I thought this was all about the patient experience. 
why are you showing me a screen that doesn't even have anything to do with the patient? What I'm trying to showcase here is the system is dynamic. We know and are alerted when the patient checks in and we'll change the content. There is still value in having this because the way facilities operates at a hospital, when a patient is checked out, we have to go through and disinfect things and clean things. A lot of times those processes are done manually right now where a facilities team is walking around, cleaning the room, putting on a clipboard, and going back and entering this information into a centralized computer. This screen, even though it doesn't affect the patient experience immediately, allows for a quicker turnaround of rooms, allows for cost savings for the hospital. So this screen here represents kind of the personalized my visit. Now what we see here is this is once I've actually checked into the hospital, I now have relevant information for me. I go back and I reference that whiteboard that I used, and there was lots of things that I was constantly writing on the whiteboard. Um, one of the things, I always tried to have a personalized visit, so I would communicate, you know, whatever my nurse's name was, I would write that down on the board. So if Nurse Janet walked in, I could say hello to Nurse Janet. Now, if I accidentally said hello to Nurse Janet and it was Nurse Ann, that didn't give us a good start and it made the experience not so good. So this will automatically integrate with the EMR and tell me who my nurse is. We can go a step further and actually integrate that with RTLS, real-time tracking location systems, and based off of an RFID badge, have a doctor or a nurse's picture pop up as they walk into my room. That gives me a secure feeling that I know who I'm working with and also gives me that personalized information. Another thing that I was constantly writing down on the whiteboard was the medicine schedule. So my wife was always in pain and she said, hey, when can I get more pain medicine? And I might say, hey, you know, I wrote down that you took 200 megs of Tylenol at 12 o'clock. You can't take your next dose until six o'clock. Because we have the ability to do HL7 messages back and forth to an EMR, we can record that. Now the hospital that I was staying at was an educational hospital, and the way it worked was every morning the doctors did rounds. It was supposed to be at 7 a.m., but somewhere between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. they would rush through there, and you would get about two minutes with them. So another thing I was doing on the whiteboard is I was constantly asking questions that I wanted to follow up with. Now that resulted in a difficult you know, way of communicating because by the time the doctor got in, which was never at 7 a.m., sometimes I even missed them, I would try to run through the very quick list of, of questions that I had that were on the whiteboard. In our system, we actually have the ability to communicate at any time with a doctor. So I can input my questions. That gives the doctor the ability to respond to my question at his leisure when he has more than a rush two minutes to respond. I get the information sooner, I'm happier about it, and it's a positive experience for everyone. Just uh, another example, and I know that I'll run out of time if I keep talking through all of them, but a specific use case that would have been relevant for us. Um, we were in Oregon, I'm from South Carolina. One of the things that happened was my mother-in-law and my father-in-law flew in because they wanted to see their daughter. At one point, we were reviewing x-rays because we wanted to understand the how the ankle surgery went and what the long-term uh, effects would be. So the doctor came in the room and he said, all right, let's review these x-rays, you have some questions. I said, all right, let's check them out. And he said, okay, walk down to my office with me. So I walked down to, my, down to his office. I understood, but I had to go back to the room and relay that information to my wife and to her parents. Right? So there wasn't, a use case, there wasn't the ability for us to view that information real time. Because our system integrates with the EMR, we have that two-way interaction stream to where we could showcase that and have everyone be a part. All right? Simple things as well, like HVAC controls. We were constantly saying, hey, the room's too cold, too warm. How do I do that? That can be automated. So I'm not wasting the nurse's time hitting my nurse call button saying, hey, please come in here, adjust the temperature. The nurses can be off doing more valuable things and I'm more satisfied with my experience because my room's warm or cool. So the next piece here is the nutrition and food menu. Again, this is a in kind of a, an open API system. So we can go in and call outside of the EMR. We can also go into the nutritional system. Um, today we partner up with Computrition and Seaboard. But we can personalize this now to where you can get your food menu order right here. So in my case, I was always picking up the phone. I was waiting in a phone tree, sometimes getting hung up on before I could make my order. With this system, we have the ability using the GUI just go in and simply order my food. Again, because it's an open API system, we also have the ability to take the information from the EMR. And let's say that I happen to be a, a diabetic patient. That will be note marked in my profile and now when I go to order my food, they'll give me the only the low sugar options. So there's lot, lots of advantages of having these systems tie together where we're not doing things manual. Mistakes aren't made, 
they don't bring me the, you know, the coconut pie and I don't have a sugar overload. Patient education is another one. Again, I like to be informed. So as I'm going through procedures, the more education I have on this, the better. There could be an example of a, of, you know, a high cholesterol patient being informed on a better diet. I know that one of my customers that's evaluating this right now has a specific use case in their maternity ward where right now they're required by law to show everyone that has a baby the shaken baby syndrome uh, video that says, hey, don't shake your baby, it's bad for their brain. So right now they're walking around with an iPad and they're showing all the new parents this video. Now those iPads are being lost, stolen, they have to be disinfected all the time and they're very costly. So with this system, we can push out whatever that training content is right to the system and we can tag it that it has been watched. We can record that in our system. So now we have that legal protection to know that the patient did watch their education and that we're ready to, to go submit that to, uh, to the legal. So the collaboration integration, I mean, there's so many use cases for this. We talk about doing a video concierge service to where those messages that I'm asking my doctors, maybe it doesn't need to go to my specific doctor, but maybe I could route this to a skills-based group in my call center and get the information that I need from just a, a, a general RN, right? And because of that, the RN's more effective, they can cover more people, more patients are happy, and they have less costs at the hospital side by having to staff less people. I know another example, when I think about patient experience, my biggest frustration in that nine days was the two days before I was leaving, I was working with what they call the discharge nurse to get all my paperwork. And my wife um, was able to walk with a walker at that point for about 10 feet, and that was as far as she could go. So the insurance said, okay, we'll pay for a walker. Now, because she could only walk 10 feet at a time and she needed to practice, she also needed a wheelchair. So the insurance company said, well, we're paying for a walker, we're not paying for a wheelchair. Now, of course, I wasn't gonna settle for that, but in order to get the paperwork submitted to have both of those paid for, I had to go back and forth with this discharge nurse. And there was one that covered the entire trauma unit. So I was always walking to her office, missing her. She would come to my place and I would miss her, et cetera. So had I had the ability to go into that skills-based routing group in the contact center, hit some type of discharge nurse that has that, they would have gotten away with less staff. And the two days where I had the major frustration, probably because we were close to getting out of there, that could have been eased in my mind. There's also integration with something called Jabber Guest. Is anyone familiar with Jabber Guest? The Jabber Guest is the ability to have a remote patient do a secure video chat. So I mentioned that my in-laws flew out, uh, their, her parents, but my, my sister-in-law was not able to make it. And she wanted to chat with her sister and make sure everything was okay. We could have used Jabber Guest to send out a secure video chat link to where the other end, my sister back in, or sister-in-law in South Carolina, could have joined via her tablet, her iPhone, a, a computer, whatever it is, didn't, doesn't require any video hardware but it's all baked into the Cisco collaboration solution. All right. So entertainment being another large one, if I think about my experience of how I went through the channels, we had an up button. And you went up, 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 and if you miss your channel, you couldn't go back down, you had to cycle through all of them. So everyone at home is very familiar with you know, the TV guide that they have. This allows us to do multicast TV and stream that out across the network. So there's all kinds of savings from an IT perspective. But as an end user, I have the experience now to view what I want to view when I want to view it. I can also do uh, you know, on-demand type movies. Uh, I have the ability to stream Pandora in my local room. So there's lots of customization that really affects my user experience. I just want to show a, a quick example of the interface and how you interact with this. Um, everyone in the hospital has what they call a pillow speaker today that has the left, down, up, right, and an OK button in the middle. This is the easiest way to interface with this, and this is probably how 99% of people would do that. Um, if you have a more educated user who wants to do the BYOD, bring your own device strategy, then you would be able to actually tie that in, and they would be able to use that as a remote as well. And I'm, I'm getting the, uh, the X, but give me two minutes and I'll wrap up here. So there is a clinical dashboard as well that I want to make sure everyone understands. As much as it's important for the, the inpatient to have a positive experience, this also changes the clinical folks' experience. They're able to check on their patients and push out workflows, for example, that says, hey, I need Mark to take a pain survey by this point. I need to watch, have him watch this education. So we can use this dashboard that they have access to 
and combine it with these workflows that say, hey, by 12 o'clock today, Mark needs to watch this, this educational uh, video or he needs to submit this pain survey or we cannot move forward. And I can have that remind them at one o'clock and two o'clock and at some point, if I choose to, I can actually interrupt their entertainment where they're watching TV and say, you're no longer allowed to watch live TV until you submit your pain score. And then I just want to end saying that, you know, this carries over from the, the room to waiting rooms, to lobbies, to going home. And just, I'm going to finish out on this slide here because I think I'm out of time. The overall platform that enables this is, again, the interactive services perspective. So on the right side, we see our endpoints, this IEC that I mentioned. And as you walk out, you can see one right behind this digital screen. That's what gives the patient their, their user interface. It could be behind a kiosk. It could be behind the TV inside the patient room. That's going to sync back to our interactive experience manager, our IEM server, which ties back to our patient media experience server. This is where the APIs are written to where we can go over to the EMR, something like Cerner, something like Epic, Exchange HL7, IC9 messages to get all that relevant uh, customer inform or patient information. Those are listed out over here. We have the EMR, we have the nutrition system, the nurse assignment, and all that ties back in to those video head end stuff that we mentioned, all of our collaboration apps, maybe it's our scientific Atlanta coders, et cetera, that allow us to push out the content. Okay, so is that my time? All right, I want to finish up there and see if there's any questions. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting presentation. I appreciate it. Yep, thank you.